Gonzaga, Big 12, this is Locked On Baylor. You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. To another episode of Locked On Baylor brought to you by Game Time. I'm Cam Stewart, joined today by the one and only, our resident knower of ball. It's been from too our long. our Daily Bears, Brandon McKinnon. It's been too long, bro. Too I was, long, was talking to my wife, you know, as good husbands do. And yeah. she was like, you haven't podcasted in a while. And I said, I haven't since my post-mortem loss to Creighton <laughs> Pod. <laughs> and I'm, I'm coming I'm, out of my And I'm excited bro. to talk positively about a sport. It's so <laughs> funny sport. because Brandon does watch football and knows ball about football. But he knows so much ball about basketball that we only have him on here for basketball. It's all, and that's, that might change. I, that I mean, wheelhouse. look, we're we're gonna get we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get weird with it the last couple months of football. So yeah, but you're yeah. a basketball guy. Yeah, I, I mean, I love football, um, but I like as any good man does. Yeah, but I grew up playing basketball, and so I feel underqualified versus some other people to talk football. But if it, if there's ever just a time when we just need to get on and just say that looked really. However, <laughs> we're hoping good, but likely bad. But I'm probably happy bad. to do that. Yeah. But for basketball, I'd love to. I love X's and O's. Um, not as big of a stats guy, more of an eye test guy, but yes. love talking hoops. So, yes. And yeah. plus, Wareham is a factory of basketball. It is. Yeah. So, that's some good teams. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. behind the curtain, I, uh, I'm also a Massachusetts guy. So, Cam just taking is over just, this. we're taking over. It's going to be locked on Baylor, Boston. Um, we don't really want to talk any football, truthfully. Yeah, between Baylor like at all. And the Patriots. The yeah, it doesn't exist. Um, they somehow become the same team, which sucks. Yeah. Just yeah. sucks so hard. It's like Taekwon. It's it, maybe it's his fault. Are we just maybe. like casting blame somewhere? I, it's the only some, time. Th- somewhere it is getting carried over. I don't know where. Yeah, probably me. Anyway, basketball. Yes, basketball. Gonzaga. Gonzaga, well, yes, 2021 national finalist. Yeah, I like what you did there. Yes, national runner-up, first loser of 2021. Even though Gonzaga Bulldogs, all of the CBB report, Twitter account, clickbait BS. Oh yeah, will say best college basketball team ever? Question mark with their record and highlights, and then it's like they literally lost the most important game of the year, and, and it wasn't like a huge upset. No, like, it ba- wasn't. like that Baylor team. If you did like a top 20 of college basketball teams this this century and that Baylor team lost in the final, they would still be in the top 20. Yeah. Oh, they yeah. were that good. Yeah. In a obviously much better conference, but like better competition all year long. Yeah. It was just it was really like it was really an optics thing from a Gonzaga standpoint and like a narrative, in my opinion, like for 2021. And then we'll talk expansion 2024, them being our neighbors soon. But that was just such like an optics thing of like, you have the everybody returning that could because the previous year got shut down for COVID. And that was like a huge narrative. It's like, you know where else that happened? Literally everywhere in the country, but they were just pushing the Drew Timmy national player of the year narrative. Jalen Suggs, like going to be a, like the best guard in the NBA in three years. Guy stinks. And like yeah. just on and on down the list. Mark Few, blah, blah, blah. We'll not talk about his arrest recently, <laughs> like around. The, and it's just another one. The media. Yeah. The media is just pumping this. And so it led to me just, you know, getting really mad online, um, which actually is like what broke me into our daily bears. So that was fun. Yes. Um, the just a origin lot of, like, story. Yeah. Just adding Gonzaga fans and breaking down film on why Drew Timmy couldn't guard a pick and roll. So yeah, it was a good time. It's beautiful. And you were right on that. So that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, so Gonzaga, Big 12. Yep. Just from a standpoint of you, the fan first, mm-hmm. yay or nay? I, I I have to say yay, right? Yes. Because I think like... I got to as well. Yeah, I have to. Because if if you're if we're thinking realistically, like even outside of the Big 12, outside of Gonzaga, outside of basketball, just college sports as a whole, right? Like I, I have to like do the 10,000 foot view. The the outlook from any conference is you have to grow or you're going to be pushed to the fringes. And so it's, and that's being driven by TV money. Like TV money is going to continue to grab the big brands. And I think it's really wise to go after 
now like clicking in to go after a Gonzaga in that university, even beyond men's basketball, like they have other good, you know, mid to lower tier athletics programs. They don't have a football team. That's going to be the knock, yeah. but their, yeah. their men's basketball team has a huge, huge presence and I, yeah, is I a mean, media darling. So it's going to be great. Like we have to do it. It's going to be great. Yeah, and I mean, talking about brands, obviously it's easier for those smaller schools to brand up in basketball than it is in football. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously with like the Dukes and the and the Yukons and, and Georgetowns and things like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Gonzaga is a big brand in college basketball. Oh, yeah. I mean, in Dude. terms of branding, it's bigger than Baylor. Like it is more yeah. noticeable to the college up, basketball yeah. blue buds. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and Baylor's a, just as good a program now, but yeah. it's, it's interesting. And I think what's the most interesting part, Seth Davis broke the story today was that basically it's your mark and the big 12 are now pushing for it. Of course we knew Gonzaga was going to want this and it was just always kind of hush hush rumors. Mm -hmm. So yeah. does it surprise you to hear that your mark is seeking permission from the university presidents to bring them in as, as soon as next year? Dude. I mean, I, I love, like, I legitimately love your Mark. Oh, he's like, great. I mean, he's, if Basketball you're, fans better love him. Yeah. And if, if you're like looking at, um, how to progress a conference beyond teams, beyond, well, I'll be politically correct, beyond universities. Yeah. But there you go. this is a sports show. So beyond it teams, is. you, there has to be a cool factor with it as just, out there and qualitative as that sounds, there has to be a cool factor. And your mark brings that the collab with bait for the big 12 championship football games, the stuff in Rucker park this off season, like your mark pushing for this does not surprise me in the slightest because what he he's always been an out of the box thinker, even pre commissioner of the big 12. And so it makes a ton of sense and it's going to be a good fit. Yeah. And you know what else is a good fit, Brandon? I know, you know, and that is prize picks because it's the daily number one daily fantasy game in the U.S. And they make it very easy. Again, I, I said this before. They make it easy for guys like me, which means it's going to be easy for guys like you. Not just Thank Brandon. You. That's everyone out there. Not just Brandon. Brandon's that was smart. targeting me. Yeah. Anyway, prize pick offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts. For example, like today, Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, prize picks discounts every select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. And it now offers Apple Pay. So quick, easy deposits right into your account, especially right in time for football season. So with the prize picks reboot policy, your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. So for NFL games, college football, those top 25 matchups, if you have a player who exits the game in the first, doesn't return until the second, that player is rebooted. Wish you could get this in regular fantasy. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports program platform with injury insurance. We are providing you with insurance. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use that code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. So that's again prizepicks.com slash locked on college or go to prize picks. Use the code locked on college today. Our show is also <laughs> brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Okay, look, I mean, me and Brandon, we both go to a lot of games. Uh, we're going to be at the Fawz this year, but we get into that for free. I'm thinking about when I go back to Boston, getting into a Celtics game because it's the best team in the NBA. It's not going to be easy to do. Right? Wrong. Well, it is going to be easy with Game Time. You can browse the Game Time app and look at all the upcoming events in, in your stadium, in your area, what's closest to you. That's what I do when I'm back in the city or when my teams are coming here. It's last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, all of that. They are easy to find. All of the events, we're talking not just sports, but concerts, comedy shows, and all that. Lowest price guarantee with event cancellation protection and job loss protection. So, Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. So download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, that's create an account, redeem the code Locked On College L O C K A D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Lowest tickets, last minute, guarantee. All right, Brandon. A little bit more on Gonzaga before we move on, because yeah. just this is this is kind of a revolution in terms mm -hmm. of hey, we're we're gonna we're gonna build a conference, we're gonna expand a conference because the Big East was built in this light, but expand yeah. a conference with the eyes of basketball, 
the eyes towards basketball. Yeah. And I'm wondering, again, Gonzaga, big brand, not as big a school, not as big as athletic department, and not as successful as a lot of these big 12 schools, but right. a great run of success over the last 20 years, mm -hmm. national recruiting, national type branding. How important is that? for a lot of these schools in the big 12 and we'll look at Baylor specifically. All right. Definitely a program on the rise. They have right. reached the pinnacle, but are, <clears throat> are hopefully plateauing as this top 10 program um, for a school like that to be brought in to the national discussion year in year out, because they're still getting a little disrespected. Yeah. How important is it to have not just two games against Kansas on the schedule, but two against spoke or two against Gonzaga on the schedule, which is going to bring national attention. Does that help? Yeah, no, it does. And I mean, I, I I personally think it's gonna be very interesting because the that's not like a revolutionary take that actually sounds really dumb, but I am very interested. Um, there are some people if, who are pushing back on it. Yeah, but if you look at so like again, if you look at the kind of recruits that have been going to Gonzaga, and I'm not I know that I took a dig at Suggs in the first segment, <laughs> but like they are five star guys, yeah. but it's a different breed of basketball. Like you're not seeing guys like an I'm I'm gonna go outside of Baylor. Like you're not seeing a guy with the same build, game, and pedigree as like Ochai Agbaji going to Gonzaga. It's gonna be a guy that was at a smaller high school, like a Jalen Suggs, like a Drew Timmy, like a Julian Strother, big fish, small pond, do the same thing in the West Coast conference. How is that gonna impact their recruiting going forward? I think that's gonna get help them get better talent because I think that Gonzaga. Mark Few, he's going to be able to go into a recruit's house when they're in the Big 12, not if, it's a matter of when, and say, yeah. you get to play Kansas, Baylor, Texas Tech. Like, the list goes on, right? And so all Kansas these teams State. That you're seeing all these in the teams, Final Four every year. Yeah, all, <laughs> these teams that, all these teams that might be overlooking you because of who you play in high school. You are a five-star, yeah. come here, right? And so I think it's going to be interesting. I think Gonzaga's pipeline is going to be stronger and it's going to continue to help Baylor. Like there's, there's not a lack of talent in Scott Drew's locker room ever. No, and so anymore, at, at yeah. least not, you know, I'm talking recent history, right? Yeah. And so it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be a huge draw. The, the dog pound, I think that's what they call their gym and student section. Kennel. In, in yeah. Spokane. Kennel, whatever. Yeah, um, so less creative than the dog, can't, or less intimidating than the dog. Yeah, yeah, I can't be dismissive now, um, <laughs> but call them puppies. And it's it's an elite college atmosphere. Like game day goes there every year for a reason. Now they get to go there for when Gonzaga plays Baylor, not and when Gonzaga feels, plays St. Mary's. It feels like a program that's ready for this. Mm -hmm. The way yeah. we were kind of talking about, you know, UCF in football, um, Gonzaga is like that times four. Right. Like oh, this yeah. has been 20, 25 years with few there. Uh, they've obviously made the final four a few times. They've lost mm -hmm. the national championship a few times. They haven't quite gotten over that hump, but they are ready to be a big yeah. time basketball program. And is there a stability factor here? That's good of like, you know, Mark few has been there for over two decades. Oh, for sure. He's not leaving, um, yeah. you know, and, and the next guy who has, it's going to inherit it a lot better than he did. And so being able to, to, bring in not just competitive teams, but huge recruits and great non-conference opponents every year. There has to be some sort of stability there that that your mark in the Big 12 just loves to see yeah. for a school that they're not bringing in for football. Oh, absolutely. And that's, I mean, that's a huge draw too, because that, that has to incentivize Gonzaga and their board of regents and their donors to want that too. Because although Few has shown that he's not going anywhere, there's still that concern. Like, yeah. When you you think that when Duke's job came open with Coach Care retired, I mean we knew that was going to be an internal hire no matter what. But you don't think there was like a slimmer, a uh, glimmer, a slim chance, a little doubt of like, I mean, sh like I felt that at Baylor. It's like yeah, I was going to say they, they were Duke. they were sweating and and we um, were sweating here. For yeah, me, and so it's like and, yeah. moving to a big conference that I mean Gonzaga's incentivized, the Big 12's incentivized. It makes too much sense. That's what I'm saying. It's not an if, it's a when. Um, so, yeah, it's, I think the biggest question is, okay, well, now we're at an odd number of teams. Yeah, that does become an issue. Does yeah. UCF just pull out of basketball entirely? Uh, no. They should <laughs> probably think about it. I, yeah. would, I would just at least think about it, guys. I mean, we're uh, thinking about pulling out of football entirely. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. We, there might be a relegation system here soon, <laughs> yeah. and that would not be great for Baylor football. But yeah. looking at Baylor basketball and specifically a future mm. rivalry and, and yearly matchup with Gonzaga. Yeah. 
how awesome would that be? That's so sick. That'd be pretty cool. Right? I'm gonna be so pissed though, because like they're we're gonna we're gonna split every year. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just gonna happen. They're gonna come to the foster and we're gonna win. And then we're gonna you're kind of feeling it a little bit at the end of that flight game. in the world. Yeah. At the end of that game last year, we looked like we we're gonna lose for a bit. I was like, dude, oh, damn. I mean, we can still make we can still give them the gifts of the national championship, but like that kind of sucks. That we lost yeah, well, now. I mean that. That that stadium was like almost entirely Gonzaga fans. Yes. I mean, they could drive there. It was so much further from us. That's what's yeah. gonna be that's that game's gonna be interesting. We open there again against Auburn. Yes, like twenty nine days. The Pentagon. So. I really wanted to go to that. That looks like a cool place, dude. It's the day before my daughter's due date, and I was like, oh. I was like Taylor, any chance you're like a week late? Like, <laughs> go? and the answer to that was no. Um, no, I asked, I asked the question. <laughs> oh, that, and it's like such a beautiful place. Like you're yeah. right by. Mount Rushmore and like what what else is your excuse to go there? Maybe yeah, we should I mean, just play there every year so we get another crack that. at it. Yeah. 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 No, but I think the I think the rivalry would be really sick. I mean, it's two similar, you know, like similar ish universities. Similar. Yeah. yeah. So. Especially in, in program too, right? Like mm -hmm. Gonzaga was obviously nothing. They had John Stockton, but had absolutely nothing before few got there and Baylor had nothing but scandal until yeah. Scott Drew got there. Obviously, those guys know each other very well. Yeah. I'm wondering if there's even something behind the scenes of like, like Scott saying, Hey, I'll yeah. The, the only thing that is like, there's no secret. Like, of course, Mark few wants to be yeah. there. You know what I mean? You don't have to feel this out. Yeah. I think that would be so cool. And I, I would say, you know, bam, you have three of the best programs in college basketball right now. You have Without three question. of the best active coaches right now with self drew and few. Um, and I think you can make an argument for four with Tang. Yeah, if Tang keeps on this projection, yeah. Like, act, and, like action. And obviously the atmospheres are going to be great. You talked about the kennel. I mean, that's not going to take away from this atmosphere at all. So I think it's interesting that it's going to be truly an experiment, like in this day and age. And it, basketball will never be a bigger money maker than football. But your mark's been the only one that says, hey, you know, it's not going to be that, but we can make some money here. And we're not yeah. going to beat the SEC in football. We're not going to beat the Big Ten in football in terms of the revenue and and all of that yeah it just won't happen but we, but we but we will in basketball yeah and that might be good enough for us i think it is i mean even without gonzaga i think we're close right now like, yeah yeah are. i mean it is the best it is the sec in terms of competitiveness mm -hmm. what the sec is in football and just having another superpower is, yeah is so huge and and cooler too because in football you worry about you lose one game in a conference like that it's it's kind of over yeah, basketball like, okay, cool. it's it's great it's it's obviously they're still big but it's a measuring stick it's it's great yeah anyway I so just who hope... who who else I, i'm genuinely curious what you think i mean yeah, we chatted we would... threw out some names like before we started recording but it puts you at 17 it had it yeah it has to be a two-team expansion so then the discussion becomes with the with the pace that this is being discussed which is 2024 mm-hmm yeah, then next basketball need, season. Exactly. Yeah. Then we need to find another team, another dance alongside player. Gonzaga to bring it. My initial thought was the national champion, UConn. That was mm. just straight what came to my head. But, but whomever is coming in is not probably not going to be coming in for football as right. well, like right? Gonzaga to even this out. So obviously, UConn won't go for that deal. Um, so then also like the big East historical tie with UConn, that just, I would feel dirty big. taking yeah. them. <laughs> like I would, I would, I would, I would be apologetic. Like Villanova. Yeah. Like Villanova yeah. was one that I thought of too, because they wouldn't come in their FCS football, but I was like, I, I don't even know if they want that. Like they're, yeah. they don't need that the way Spokane does. Right. And they're about as far away as Spokane is. So, yeah. uh, so the, the other one that came to mind in the Midwest Creighton. Creighton. Yeah. Makes Good a ton of sense. Program. Yeah. Makes a ton of sense. Yeah. yeah. Again, it's not a huge university. It's not a huge athletic department, but either is Gonzaga. And it's not quite the brand of Gonzaga, of course, but they're, they're a good team. They're mm. a very good mid-major team. If you can still, I mean, they're a big East team, but yeah. um, obviously we know that firsthand. They're a good team. They're a good yeah. program. So I'm interested to see. I think Creighton makes the most sense. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I can't I can't really pull another another name that quickly. Yeah, I don't you know. know. Um yeah, I think Creighton Creighton absolutely makes the most sense. It would be 
it'll be a huge pull. I mean, they they consistently are you know developing three star guys, four star guys, and do yeah. five star talents. Um, so yeah, I mean, they're they a second need, weekend team every they're year. A second weekend program every which year. Is, hey, I'd love to get back to that for sure. Yeah. Now, whomever does go in, I just hope none of them get hurt. Okay. And so that's why you need to expect the unexpected and talk to Jace Medical and get the Jace case, which provides five life saving antibiotics for emergency use. So all it takes to get a Jace case is to fill out a simple online form. And in some cases, you jump on a quick call with one of our board certified physicians. No big deal at all. And with this, you also get ongoing care from our physicians or any or any treatment-related questions they're going to ask you. It's doctor-created. It's doctor-recommended. So don't be caught unprepared. You can get $20 off these life-saving antibiotics from Jace Medical by using my code Locked On at checkout at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Everyone should be empowered to take care for themselves or their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why you need to get the Jace case again. $20 off these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using my code locked on at jacemedical.com. Final thing, Brandon, we're, we're going to talk. How about some Baylor? Yeah. This is what you know. And we are going to be sprinkling you in here in the next month before the season starts, right? We'd About a month to. from now, right? Yeah. Um, so the big thing that I think is so exciting for us as Baylor. This is, I mean, this is a new look team for the Bears yeah. this year and in good ways. Um, but the diaper dandies yeah. that are coming in, you have three of the most exciting prospects in the nation coming mm -hmm. in. Five-star Jacoby Walter, huge international product, four-star Miro Little, and a five-star center who reclassified to come in this year in Eve Misi. Break it down for me, Brandon. Who yeah. are you most excited to see this year? You're giving I know me, it's like one, you're giving one, me eight, eight minutes. You're giving me eight minutes yes. to do this. Yes, which is I am. Up. Um, so, I mean, the sexy answer is Jacoby, or the mainstream answer is Jacoby. So we've seen, he's, yeah. He's going to be a top 10 pick. Like, yeah. that's going to happen. Um, but, man, like, I am I am so excited for Miro Little. He's probably not going to play as many minutes this year as we as like to justify that. But if you just flip on the Finland men's national team tape, like Miro is sharing the court with Lori Markkinen. NBA yeah, player, grown men. Like and he's 18. Yeah. Like Miro is a dog. And um, I'm really excited for him. The Eves, the Eves thing is really interesting to me because what Scott has shown is he values tenure mm -hmm. always. Yeah, especially values, in the middle. Values, values. Especially at that position. Mm -hmm. And so from a prototype standpoint, Eves and Josh are very similar. Very. Every, day, every day John is going to start. Like that's going mm -hmm. to happen. And I think it's going to look very similar to like flow started immediate flip. Not because John isn't talented, but I think they just love to keep fresh legs at the center position. Maybe we rotate all three of them. But I do just think Josh is going to have more minutes early. But all indications have been like, oh, no, like Eves is ready. Like he reclassified yeah. because he's ready. And that was something that um, I I don't have a ton of sources. I don't have a ton. Of, like I'm not over like I'm not saying this, but like you just know ball. That's the source enough. But I did. I did. I was on when Eves committed. I was like, he's coming this year. He's not coming in two years. Like he's reclassifying. And it's because he was ready and all of yeah, the indications were that that was happening. Um, and so it, it's hard to pick just one. I just went on. I went on a two minute rant to give you some time to ask questions. I'm, I'm intrigued. I am intrigued. I think the most by by Macy because mm -hmm. those three guys at center are all solid. Uh, but yeah. it feels like a position of need just because of what you got from Flo Thamba last year. And kind of, it was, a, it was a setback. It's not really what we expected um, yeah. mostly on the defensive end. It wasn't terrible, but he just didn't give you the production that you were looking for. He looked like yeah. another step. So with me, I, I think a lot of that was, sorry, real quick. No, I, can't help myself. I think a lot of that is like him looking a step slow was mm -hmm. the changing of how fives look now. You think so? And yeah, like, I and mean, you do were, have a super athletic, quick exactly. five behind him. And like, look at the fives throughout the rest of the Big Twelve that he matched up with. All of them 
were like guys that weren't a traditional post up five. You know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. that's why I think he was so effective against Drew Timmy was because of how Timmy played. And so to have Everyday John, Josh Ojanwuna, and Eve Misi to to be those three guys is incredible from a depth and athleticism standpoint. Yeah. And and just from like the body type, Misi and, yeah. and Josh O are so similar. Yeah. It's, it's wild. Crazy wingspan, super athletic. And, and one thing that, I mean, I don't try to pretend to be like this great basketball scout, but mm. looking at Misi's tape, the footwork is really good. Yeah. Like that is something that is so tough for a lot of these really long centers when they're going into college because they've just hit their growth spurt. Uh, that's why like someone like a Chet Holmgren was, I mean, yeah. such a revelation because he was so great handling the ball and, and he just athletically, he was already there. It looks, and I'm not saying he's Chet Holmgren, obviously it's a way different game, but it looks like you said, athletically, his body has caught up. Like he's, yeah. he's ready to take that. Now, obviously, yeah, and if you look at some of his early tape, different. It was not ideal. <laughs> and right. So the right. stuff that's come out since then and like his time at prolific prep, I mean, the guy is like, he's ready. He's, and, he's ready. And do we see any of them for a sophomore year? Uh, of the, the three freshmen? Mm -hmm. I think we see Miro and Eves. You yeah. see me see too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's I think super, so. super young. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I just think. I think I just think they all he, have NBA on them. They and, do, and I think they, they will. They not, that's not yeah. to say you can you can stay more than one year, but yeah, I, they do. And, all just and look like NBA games, man. I, I think Misi, it's going to be more of like, hey, you are just about to turn eighteen, right? What like yes, maybe you're a fringe first second round pick because I think that's where he's going to be, just from like mm -hmm. a minutes and a burn standpoint. Again could completely change if he comes out and dominates right like it could be very similar and we didn't wish this upon anyone but it could like if an injury happens whatever it would be very similar to like oh every day john went down two years ago sohan played his way into a little lottery yeah right? mm -hmm. um but i i just think that like a second year would be so huge for him to where he could catapult his way into a lottery pick because coming in two years our incoming freshman class are not big men like right. That's why we signed him. It'd be nice for the team. Yeah. You know? And so I think yeah, he'll, man. I think he'll be here as a sophomore. I think Miro will too. Just again, like we have so many guards. It's a blessing mm -hmm. again. Like yeah. Ray J Jaden Langston. Like we have so many ball handlers. Um, I think Miro will come, but Jacoby's gone. Like enjoy it yeah, while he's here. We player. have 35 games of them and he's out. Yeah. And I think too, one, one more quick, quick thought before we get out of here on, on me see too, is that, that seems to be a position more than any where if you're just not ready for the NBA, it's like getting a G getting your GPA down. It's so hard to get it back up. Yeah. Whereas guards, you can shoot your way out of funks. Like if you if you learn how to play defense, you're gonna get on the floor and then you find your shot. Yeah. But with big men, it's just so much different. And it's NBA, it really depends on the team how they're using these guys. I think more than ever. Yeah. And I think of I just think of a guy like Jaleel Okafor. Who yeah, came that's in with I think, great I think, post yeah. moves in college, didn't play a lick of defense. Perfect, Duke went yeah. to zone a whole year. They won the national championship. Um, just to go with him and number three pick and just never learn how to play defense and yeah. never develop to the NBA game at all. And I yeah. just you run that risk with with those big guys. And I think that's something Scott can tell Misi after his freshman year and not be, you know, tricking him, not be, you know, trying to hypnotize him into coming back. Yeah, it's not I think toxic. I like I I picked when I think of like who's gonna go. I as dumb as it sounds, because I agree with you wholeheartedly, and I'm saying this to back that up in sports you just said. I, I picture what does he look like next year guarding XYZ fill in the blank NBA player. It's not the it's never the offense. Everybody that is a high recruit on a D1 level can score mm -hmm. the basketball. So if we're looking at those three guys, I think what does Jacoby look like guarding jason tatum next year i think he i don't think he would lock him down but i think as a guy or stemming a second unit what does he look like guarding yes i think that's the highest harris whatever unit. i think if he, you're picked out can't. of it if you're picked outside of the lottery that that's what keeps you on the floor yeah that's what keeps you on the team yeah and it's if like that's why top I think 10, you're probably right. fine but yeah yeah it's like he he would guard that wing player he could guard that wing player tomorrow what does Miro look like guarding Damian Lillard or, you know, fill in the blank second guard? I think that's tough. Like, I, we don't know. What does Eves look like guarding fill in the blank Robert Williams backup 
Anthony Davis, whatever. Like, I think that's tough. So that's why I think those two will stay. Dude, I'm so ready to talk more basketball. So stoked. We, oh, we, we, spent the, we spent the entire freshman segment not talking about the lottery pick freshman on our roster. Yeah. So we do need to run this back because Jacoby, yeah, so Jacoby, Jacoby, Jacoby is going to be a day one starter and he's going to be very good. So oh, that's like, wait. that's, that's the, that's the thing. And he's leaning fully into the Kobe nickname. He's wearing the Kobe armband. I'm all in. It's legit. I'm all in. Anyway, Brandon, thank you. We need a transfer pod too. I mean, yeah, yeah. We ahead. will. Trust me, especially with this way this football season's going, we will have that and a yes, bye sir. week this week. So we're actually going to talk some more basketball tomorrow. We're going to have a special guest on that half of you will like, half of you won't. Uh, we're going to talk a lot more basketball here. We're about a month out from the season. 29 and, days, dog. 29 days. Oh, I just can't wait. Brandon McKinnon, thank you so much. You can find him on ODB. You can find him on Twitter right there. If you're not watching on YouTube, that's at Brandon with an E at the end, underscore Mac with the K, like Rhodes. Yeah. And he's going to give you the best basketball content in Baylor Twitter. I guarantee that. Let's run it. Anyway, Brandon, thank you. This has been, always will be, Locked on Baylor.